Before she was a royal duchess gracing the cover of every tabloid magazine and the subject of a pretty polarizing media frenzy, Meghan Markle was a successful actress, activist, and self-proclaimed foodie with her very own food blog, The Tig. What is a tig? I don't know. Alas, she's now the subject matter of countless TikToks unpacking every scene from the recent Netflix reality series, Harry and Meghan. And while the world seems to be pretty divided on Team Royal or Team m and here is not the place for debate. Today we're focusing on the food as I embark to eat like a royal or ex-royal, I guess. Whatever the current situation may be, I'll be attempting to eat like Meghan Markle for a day. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, I'll be eating like actress turned Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle. But obviously not quite because my needs are unique. So I'm gonna be using her alleged meals as a template for teaching gent nutrition and inspiring what I make that works for me and my body. Also a reminder that this diet was really compiled from different primary and secondary sources. So I cannot speak to its legitimacy or accuracy or whether or not it's up to date. And a reminder, this is just what I ate on a random day and it's not meant to be copied or recommended as how you should eat. Always speak to a registered dietitian about your unique needs. Abby, let's do it. So like most of the rest of the world, I watched the Oprah interview and then the Netflix documentary and now I'm reading Harry's book. And now you've written all about it in your new book, I have a lot of thoughts, which of course I would love to talk about, but I'm going to try to put the drama aside for a hot minute to focus on the food. And I'm going to try to ask you guys in the comment section to try to do the same. It just feels a little too early around here to be digging deep into racism and mental health issues and family drama. You know? Anyways, speaking of early, let's talk about coffee. So when I tried to look up Megan's coffee order, things were coming up nil which is really surprising considering the media has kind of been up her ass, just reporting on seemingly minuscule things like wearing a messy bun or closing her own car door. So yeah, I'm kind of surprised that the whole coffee order didn't make the cut. But what I do know is that while she was in Toronto shooting suits, she was really into her Nespresso maker. And then she took like a break from coffee when she moved to the UK and she only just started drinking coffee again. Fascinating, I know. We also know that Megan recently invested in a coffee startup called Clever. So I think it's fair to say that Megan's a coffee girly like me. So according to the website, Clever is an adaptogenic based powder that contains coffee, probiotics, and adaptogenic mushrooms, which claims to offer stable energy without the jittery crash. Abby, does this sound legit? So when we take a closer look at this ingredient list, we can see that Clever contains ashwagandha for stress reduction, lion's mane for brain health, and reishi mushrooms for immunity. Now, starting with the ashwagandha, we actually do have some promising research that it may be effective at helping to reduce stress. So for instance, one study found that 88% of participants reported a reduction in stress from supplementing with ashwagandha. Same thing goes for the lion's mane with research showing that it may help to reduce anxiety and depression and may even help to protect against Alzheimer's. As for the reishi mushroom, the research on its impact on immunity is highly mixed and it's really unclear if they are more effective for folks who are already ill versus healthy individuals. So the verdict is still out on that one. As for whether or not this specific brand of coffee could help to reduce a caffeine induced energy crash, well, we may or may not have ashwagandha to thank for that. While we definitely need more research to understand these effects, one recent study did find that caffeine blended with ashwagandha may help with the slow release of caffeine to prevent an energy crash later on. On top of that, due to its calming effects, ashwagandha may also help to relieve caffeine jitters for folks who are particularly sensitive to caffeine. Sounds promising, but probably not gonna do anything for me that my supplements and my actual legitimate anti-anxiety medications are already doing. So I'm just gonna do her oat milk latte and take my supplements on the side. Cheers. Mm. Yep. 
So I'm hungry, let's talk about breakfast. Back in the day when Megan was here in Toronto shooting suits, she apparently was a regular at this little kind of juice bar place in Yorkville called Revita Size. I think I've actually been there before. They have good soups. Good soup. If I recall. Anyways, she would apparently order like the acai bowl two to three times a week, and I managed to get the basic recipe to make at home. Unpopular opinion, folks, but actual acai kind of tastes like <laughs> Like it is so overwhelmingly bitter, it requires so much sugar to make it palatable. Not to mention, I get that it's been branded as an amazing superfood, but blueberries, cherries, and other red berries are really not that far off. So I'm gonna work with what I already have in the freezer and turn it into a hunger crushing combo. Let's do it. Okay, so according to the recipe, this is just supposed to be one acai packet on milk, banana, frozen berries. That's it. It's a good start, but I know for me, I cannot live on just like blended up berries alone. So I'm gonna throw in our berries. I got frozen banana as per the recipe. I got a little spinach and a little kale. We'll do like a tiny nugget of each. Might as well get some veg in there. Now, some kind of source of protein is key. This could be protein powder. I'm using a nice full fat Greek yogurt. It's gonna add some fat, it's gonna add some body, and it's gonna add a ton of protein. Mm, I think we'll drizzle the peanut butter on top. All right, a little honey. This thing, oh. You have the most prepared YouTube channel in the I world. Know. Yeah, well, someone's getting fired today. They didn't take the lid off. All right, and then our almond milk. Okay, let's blend her up. I don't know why I spend money on these things. They never work. Might as well just mash them by hand. Stomp on them. Oh, the just right? like, yes, yeah, just like making wine, baby. Making wine. Oh, oh. There's a little chunk, but it's par for the course. Mmm. All right. This looks so good. You know, I like always totally forget about making a smoothie bowl. Oh, you got to do like this kind of thing. But it actually is really delicious. Mmm. A little swirl. Nice. Some banana. Is that a hair or is that just like... No, it's like banana goop. Banana goop strings. That's new for me. Mm. All right. Some grapes. In what world would a princess be styling her own bowl like this? No world. No such world. But you know what? <laughs> like, I don't even have time to style bowl like this normally. Proof that YouTube is not real life. Okay, some hemp hearts. And then she apparently also really likes coconut and I love it. Oh, it's like snow, just beaut. Okay, so even though in real life, I would never take the time to assemble a bowl that looks as Instagram worthy as this, I am not mad about it. I am quite proud of this masterpiece. I also really love the idea of a smoothie bowl because it means that we get to sit down and really be more mindful about each and every bite. It's really easy to just chug down four or 500 calories of a smoothie on the go and not really take in any sensory feedback about the experience. But this on the other hand, I am gonna savor. Mmm, mmm, brave fruit, mmm. 
but it's good. All right, now that we're fueled and caffeinated, let's take a look at Megan's workout routine. I love running, but I think I think you have to find a work a workout routine that really speaks to you beyond trying to get goals for your body. So for me, running is like I need as much for my head and to clear my head as I do for keeping in shape. So I love to jog. I do a lot of hot yoga, moksha yoga specifically, and then Pilates. Love this exercise philosophy. Abby, do you agree? Yes. Honestly, I feel like more often than not, we lose sight of exercise for purposes beyond just weight loss, especially when most high profile celebs work out exclusively to shed pounds for a role or a particular dress. <coughs> okay. okay. <coughs> Excuse me. But exercise has a myriad of benefits that have nothing to do with weight loss, including improvements in energy levels, mood, cognitive function, regularity, sleep quality, and even improved blood markers like cholesterol and blood pressure. So I love that Megan tunes into how certain exercises make her feel both physically and mentally, and also isn't afraid to diversify her workout routine based on what feels good for her. I am admittedly not a runner thanks to the damage that two kids have done to my pelvic floor, but I can definitely get down for some Pilates. Let's go for it. Right, folks, I'm feeling the snack attack come on really effing strong. So I'm gonna need a little something something to get me into lunch. And we're in luck because one of Megan's favorite snacks is also one of my go-to favorites. So she loves hummus with crackers and veg. Simple, but effective. Okay, so I had to get Megan's favorite crackers. These are Mary's Organic, and they are definitely really nutrient dense. So one serving of 12 crackers has three grams of fiber and four grams of protein. So really awesome and a really super simple ingredient list. So we got some protein and healthy fats in our hummus, plus some fiber rich carbs in our veg and crackers. And I read this article that Megan wrote in Today where she described this specific snack in really kind of sensual words. So she described, you know, the creamy mouthfeel and the crunchy taste and the, the savory flavor. I don't think it matters what anyone's politics are on Megan herself, but we love when a girl romanticizes food. And this really is like a perfect little love triangle. Mm. It is officially lunchtime and the hanger is hangering. And according to Megan, she loves to honor her California roots by tucking into some really delicious Baja style fish tacos. Again, California girl grew exactly. up having a lot of fish tacos. Exactly. You don't have to ask me twice. I am a huge taco fan. So I'm gonna get chopping some accompanying veg. Abby, can you go over how to choose a sustainable fish? You got it, Abby. It's unfortunately not as straightforward as choosing farmed over wild caught or vice versa, as it will depend on the location, how it was caught, and the fish itself. So for example, farmed tilapia from Peru is a highly rated option, but farmed from China is not. While wild caught Pacific cod is another highly rated pick, but Atlantic cod is on the avoid list. So your best bet is to look for a seafood that's been certified by a regulatory organization like the Aquaculture Stewardship Council, Global Sustainable Seafood Initiative, or Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. All right, little olive oil. I'm using um, a sustainable American Dover sole because that's what my fishmonger had on sale this week. A little salty salt. All right, we're gonna make a quick little sauce here. Sour cream, touch of mayo, some tahini. Okay, a little bit of that. Oh yeah, a lot of that. And some lime juice. A little cabbage crunch, a little sauce action. Some crumbled feta. 
All right, that was surprisingly quick and easy. And it's also inherently super well balanced. So we've got protein in our fish, healthy fats in our avocado, some carb action in our tortillas, and lots of fiber rich veg. A little squirt, squirt. Mmm. Mmm. The feta, next level. Mm. It is 3 p.m. and that energy slump is hitting hard. So let's take a look at one of Megan's favorite snacks. Definitely a green juice. I mean, I think trying to go for coffee or things like that only end up hurting you at the end. So to get like a really good natural source of energy, like a great green juice or even kombucha I'll have sometimes, something that just gets right into your system is a nice pick me up. I can get down with a little cold pressed juice situation every now and then. Um, but Megan's recipe is more like a smoothie to me because she basically just blends together apple, uh, kale or spinach, lemon, ginger with almond milk. We're gonna see how it goes. Like with the acai bowl, I feel like that's just not gonna keep me very satiated for very long. So I'm gonna use a protein almond milk and I'm gonna throw in the rest of my avocado for some healthy fats. Let's see how it goes. We got apple, run away, little fresh ginger, little frozen kale, just a bit, because I already feel like this recipe is a bit of a stretch. A little bit of lemon juice. Whoa, sans pit. Whoa. All right, almond milk. This is weird. This is very weird. And let's get the rest of that avocado in there. Oh, f not the whole thing. It's, we're having a day here, folks. It's Friday, and I am over, <laughs> over making my snacks from scratch. All right, let's blend this. Oh, no. That is not a pick me up, friends. That is a put me down. As with most smoothie recipes that I try that suck, I feel like a banana will remedy the situation. Mm. Actually not bad. Not great, but not bad. We have finally made it to the end of our royal day in the life, and I am ready for a dinner fit for a duchess, aka pasta. We love a carby end to a day. So Megan apparently swears by her recipe for this zucchini pasta, which she apparently calls filthy, sexy mush. We might want to workshop the title, but I'm definitely intrigued on what this exactly entails. Apparently the sauce only really requires three simple ingredients, zucchini, water, and bouillon. I got those things. She claims that a humble zucchini will turn into this like buttery, creamy sauce. And I just like cannot wait to try it. So let's get chopping up some veg. All right, so this seems pretty straightforward. It's just a zucchini chopped up real fine. Hopefully not my finger. We're gonna give this a go. Olive oil. I think that's really key in this case because the sauce is not a whole lot else. We got our chopped zucchini. I'm gonna add some generous salt action and pepper. And we'll let that just cook. Ingredient two, bouillon. Oh, oh. One second. Brody, she's rolling. Bundle of bucatini, because I'm busting out my favorite pasta for this, for the royal treatment. Don't, don't show this part, Brody. Don't. No one has to know. No one has to know that I didn't have 90 minutes to wait for a zucchini to mush down. I had to turn it into baby food. 
This mush needs some protein. So I've got some white beans, just gonna throw them down, drained and rinsed. We got our bucatini. I feel like without nooch, this is going to be really flavorless. So I'm loading up. Looks like pesto, actually. Let's plate her up. Apparently Megan's favorite dessert is a glass of wine and I'm not mad about it. So well, let's put this little meal together, shall we? It's been a day. A little cheese. So we got fiber in the melted down zucchini plus in the white beans, protein in the white beans, which I added, and also in the nooch, healthy fats in the olive oil that I cooked with, and some carbs in the pasta. Ooh. It's surprisingly really good. Nice job team. Like I was skeptical about the prospects of a pasta sauce without onions and garlic, but I'm really glad I tried it because this is definitely kind of like a low FODMAP option. And the bouillon actually adds just enough flavor and kind of salty bite that it is really satisfying. Hmm, Megan, I'm impressed. I gotta say that this day of eating left me feeling royally satisfied. And it does seem on brand for Megan, as she has been quoted as saying that it's important to balance decadent treats that make the heart go pitter pat and nourishment that fuels my body. I love that. And it really doesn't matter to me what your like personal or political opinions on Megan are. I honestly, like personally don't care enough to pass judgment, but I just love when a celebrity or influential person has an attitude around food like this. Um, so I definitely just try to avoid the things that I know are gonna make me feel lethargic or sluggish. I think if you deprive yourself of anything, you're just gonna crave it more. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just finding that balance. That is a great real world example of intuitive eating and gentle nutrition. When you give yourself unconditional permission to eat the foods that you love, you're you're much better able to tune into your body's cues when it says like, you know what, mm, maybe that doesn't feel so good. Fan or no fan, I think we can all get on board with an eating philosophy like this. And on that note, that's all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up, leave me a comment below on whose diet you'd like to see me try next, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.